have the honor of introducing our speaker today. Before I do that, I'd point out that uh, Mark brought along several of his co-workers and at least one heckler who was unplanned. <clears throat> so I'll introduce the heckler first. Uh, Mark's kid brother, uh, the Honorable Todd Platt. <laughs> I understand he's representing their mother. <laughs> Mark, and I'm introducing Mark Platts uh, today. Mark has served as president of Susquehanna Heritage since the initial startup of the two-county nonprofit organization in 2003. Susquehanna Heritage is the official Pennsylvania heritage area to York and Lancaster counties. The organization collaborates with local, state, and national partners to connect people to the Susquehanna River and its history. Their work focuses on the Susquehanna Riverlands, the ribbon of scenic and historic <coughs> landscapes and communities along both shores of the river as it flows through the counties. The group owns and manages the Zimmerman Center for Heritage on the riverfront south of Wrightsville, about a quarter of a mile from my house, and manages the Columbia Crossing River Trail Center in Col on Columbia's waterfront in Lancaster County. Both facilities serve as visitor education centers focused on river heritage and recreation for visitors and residents alike. On a personal note, Mark and I probably met uh, in about that 2002-2003 time frame. We were actually working together on a, a zoning ordinance and a comprehensive plan for Lower Windsor Township in the, in the Riverlands project. And uh, I can still remember him saying that he had heard about this opportunity with this startup organization, something about the river, but he didn't know too much about it. And I think if you fast forward to 2019, he has certainly created a, an impactful organization bridging the Susquehanna Ocean. They call it a river, but it's more of an ocean, linking York and Lancaster County. So kudos to Mark for great leadership and a startup organization to make a big impact. Mark is a native of York, now living in Lancaster, with 32 years of experience in urban planning, community design, landscape conservation, and heritage and outdoor tourism development. He holds a bachelor's degree in urban and rural studies from Shippensburg <coughs> and a master's degree in urban and regional planning from some school down in Florida. He has managed public and private sector planning organizations in Washington, D.C., Orlando, Florida, and Bainbridge Island, Washington. <coughs> Mark's presentation today will focus on the recent designation by the U.S. Congress of the York and Lancaster counties as the Susquehanna National Heritage Area and why our region and the river deserve this new honor. Would you please give a warm rotary welcome to our speaker, Mark Platt. Thank you all. Uh, that was really nice, John. Uh, there's all kinds of things he could have said about me because he, we work together, but uh, thank you. I really, I really appreciate that. And it's. Uh, it's really great to be here on behalf of Susquehanna Heritage, and uh, I'm joined today by our Vice President Jonathan Pinkerton, who's taking a nice picture right now. Thank you, John. Uh, Jonathan Pinkerton here, you can't miss the beard. Um, and our Director of Community Giving, uh, Bill Wright. And Bill handed me a note here, uh, give a plug for Susquehanna Heritage as part of Give Local. That's right, May 3rd, you can give to Susquehanna Heritage uh, as part of Give Local. So we're, we're part of that too. Um, I'm gonna get my clicker here. So um, it's really good to be here. Uh, so, so many people I knew. I, I hardly could eat lunch because uh, I recognized everybody and people were coming up to say hi, and I really appreciate the friendly welcome. I did not expect my esteemed little brother, Todd, to be here, so that was a, a surprise. Uh, but, uh, pardon? I won't heckle. He's not going to heckle me. That's, that's a first. But, but thank you, Todd. Great to have you here. Um, you know, uh, I'm here to talk primarily to fill you in on this new National Heritage designation and why our region warrants that designation. But uh, I had to share, uh, first of all, this isn't the first time I've spoken to Rotary. I spoke uh, to the club on November 12, 2003, as we were starting up our new heritage area. And I must have done such a good job that you asked me back. <laughs> About 16 years, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, uh, it, it was, it was, see, it took a while for, Lori, you got it? <laughs> um, it was, it was neat at that time to be, as John said, a, a really startup organization. We didn't really know what we were doing. 
Um, and so much has happened over the last 16 years. Uh, at that time, in 2001, uh, we had been designated a Pennsylvania Heritage Area, all of York and all Lancaster counties. We were originally known as the Lancaster York Heritage Region. Uh, nobody wanted to have a different name, and Lancaster was alphabetical, so they got to be first, which I heard about for years on the York side. Uh, but we were one of Pe we were Pennsylvania's tenth Pennsylvania Heritage Area. Uh, there are now twelve, um, and these are areas of the state of that have history and recreational resources, natural resources, and stories of state significance. And you have to go through a feasibility study, a management plan, all kinds of things. All that hard work was done before I got here, and, and you were part of that. Uh, but I got here and it was all done. Uh, but I had to start up this new organization. Uh, and if anybody can pick out Anne in this photograph, anybody? Look for the red dress? white <laughs> memo. <laughs> um, this was the actual ceremony announcing the designation in August of 2001 on the banks of the Susquehanna River at John Ray Restaurant. So Anne, Anne was there at the beginning. Um, and let's see if I can, there we go. Since then, uh, we've really been engaged in 16 years of projects and partnerships in both counties, up and down the river, even beyond the river in the Chesapeake Bay watershed. Um, we've done everything from maps and guides to websites to exhibits. We even made a movie back in 2006. Um, and, and it's really been really rewarding to work with so many partners. Uh, Heritage areas are known, sometimes we're in the background, nobody even knows we're involved in things, sometimes we're out front, but nothing gets done without partners. And we've had such strong local, state, and national partners through the years. Pretty much anybody that's doing anything in heritage, tourism, recreation, we've engaged with either supporting or leading or just being a, 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 a co-partner on different projects. Um, ten, about ten, five years in, 2008, we actually made a major shift in our focus to say, you know what, the river is really a significant place. Uh, it's the thing that unites the two counties. Uh, there's not an organization that really was organized across the river. Our board of directors from the very beginning, uh, with the founding members, uh, Louis Appel and Bob Kinsley, and oh, the guy that's the governor right now, Tom Wolf, um, they, they actually, on the York side, along with the, the leaders on the Lancaster side, came together in one organization, half from York, half from Lancaster, and it, it, it's never been done since, actually. Maybe that's, I don't know. <laughs> um, but it, it really came to bring the counties together. But in 2008, we said, you know, we can be a leadership organization in the river because that's a wonderful asset that we need to focus on. And a lot of that was helped along by the wonderful gift of the Zimmerman Center for Harry's by John and Catherine Zimmerman to us. Uh, they gave us their fully restored 1750 mansion, and all they asked was make it a place for the public, make it a place for education, make it a place for kids to come and learn about the river. And that kind of started us really being involved in the retail side of tourism on the river. Uh, and since then, we've expanded to, to run the Columbia Crossing River Trail Center, the wonderful $2 million visitor center, Columbia Borough built on the river, and they basically have hired us to run it for them. We're in our fourth year doing that. Uh, so, and, and that all led to a national park partnership, bringing the National Park Arrowhead and planting it in the soil of York County for the first time ever. Before you had to go to Gettysburg or east of Philadelphia, uh, but now the National Park Service has a partnership right here in, in York County at the Zimmerman Center for Heritage. Um, we also created sort of a grand vision that the river could be a national destination for heritage tourism, for travelers, for visitors. Um, and we developed a, our strategic plan around that concept. And we've been continuing to work for that uh, goal in the last decade. So we just adopted our new strategic plan. We're focused on placemaking, creating great places along the river in both counties, and focused on tourism development to drive visitors to the river so they spend money and then they go home. Um, but we get, we, we get the benefits of that. About the same time as we shifted to the river, we also started this National Heritage Area process. And um, we didn't know at the time, I remember thinking, oh, this will take a couple years. Now, I had a brother in Congress, you know, you'd think it'd be real easy. <laughs> Uh, National Heritage Area has actually taken action of Congress, and it's been 11 years uh, of effort and cooperation and due diligence and going to Washington and talking to people. Uh, but the first step was creating a feasibility study, and this took about a year. It had to be reviewed by the National Park Service to say, do, does York and Lancaster County have stories of national significance that warrant being a National Heritage Area? The Park Service said yes, but it still had to go through Congress. We had community meetings. We had community involvement. It, it laid out uh, how, how, 
how we could become a national heritage area, and our board decided to go for it. Uh, so what is a national heritage area? I have it here on my little screen so I can actually read it to you. A national heritage area is a place designated by Congress where natural, cultural, historic, and recreational resources form a cohesive, nationally distinctive landscape arising from human activity shaped by geography. Now, I'm an urban planner and geographer, so I love that definition. <laughs> but that's a national park definition. What it really means is natural heritage areas are special places that have nationally important stories to tell. Now, we all know that here in York and Lancaster counties, that we're nationally significant. But we wanted to bring that specific honor of Congress uh, to our area. And when you, national heritage areas tell important stories of national significance, they're grassroots, they're not top down from the federal government. They're started with local communities and local organizations. They support historic preservation, conservation, recreation. But most importantly, I think, is a national heritage area fosters pride of place and an enduring stewardship ethics that we will care about the place that's nationally significant. We saw early on, and we still see the main benefits from this designation, being an enhanced national identity and exposure. We get on that map. It's a National Park Service map, a National Park Service website, <laughs> National Park Service network. And York and Lancaster County are now part of it. Uh, we get technical assistance from the National Park Service, so we will get help with planning and training and maps and guides and interpretation. And of course, many times, money is very important. And we get our fair share of the National Heritage Area Program funding for the National Park Service as this rolls out over the next few years. Now, as I said, it takes an act of Congress. How many remember Schoolhouse Rock? I'm just a bill sitting on Capitol Hill. Okay, I won't stop. <laughs> remember that song? Uh, those of us of a certain age. Um, it is, you know, I played that for my 14-year-old son last year when we were moving through Congress finally. And I said, this is exactly what your dad's been doing for the last decade. It's, it is so accurate to watch that Schoolhouse Rock film. But it literally does take an act of Congress. And, and we've been, we worked at it for 11 years. Uh, Todd was great at the beginning in connecting us to people. He's an ethical guy. He wasn't going to lead the effort himself because, you know, I'm involved in this. And that's the right thing to do. And you all know that about Todd. But he did really help us understand how things work down there and help us get started. Uh, and Senator Casey uh, signed on early on, and uh, Senator Bob Casey was a big supporter and ultimately did the, the key amendment that got us designated. And Congressman Lloyd Smucker of Lancaster joined the board two years ago, and he's been a great, great supporter of this. So, uh, and finally, we got it. Um, we, we got the designation of a national heritage area uh, just, a, just a few weeks ago. So, the National, so that's why the National Heritage Area Act was passed on March 12th, was signed by the President on March 12th. The Senate passed it six weeks ago yesterday, House passed it four weeks ago yesterday, overwhelming majorities. We were part of a 698-page bill. <laughs> okay, we got, we got those three lines added to the 698-page bill. That was the key thing. You know, that's how Congress works. But it was amazing. Jonathan and I were in the Senate gallery when the Senate voted on it. It was a 92 to 8 vote. You know, 92 to 8 in these times in Washington. I, I actually felt the relief of senators, and then we saw it in the House too, when the House voted, that they could actually come together and support something good. It was really neat to be there. And that bill included the permanent authorization, land and water conservation fund, and things all over the country. But it included Susquehanna National Heritage Area. So we are America's 55th National Heritage Area. President Trump signed the bill two weeks ago yesterday, uh, and we are officially designated. But now the, the actual hard work starts. It's a public law. So the law says, names the heritage area, so that's quite a national heritage area. It says the boundaries are Lancaster, York counties, and Pennsylvania. It says the local coordinating entity, the folks that have to lead the heavy lifting, is our organization. Uh, we're happy to take that on. Uh, so we're the local coordinating entity for the National Heritage Area. It comes with some limited authorities. Um, it comes with a lot of duties. Uh, so as the local coordinating entity, we have to lead a management plan process. We have to engage the community. Uh, we have to implement that management plan. It will focus on recognizing and protecting historic and natural resources. It will establish interpretive exhibits and programs. 
That plan will lay out efforts to develop recreational and educational opportunities, increase public awareness and appreciation of our history, and a lot of other things going forward. Uh, it's not just an honor. It's actually a responsibility. And we are not going to be doing it alone. All those partners you saw up on that chart earlier, we're going to be working with all of them. I hope all of you will engage with us as we move forward on this process. There's a long, there's a, about a three-year bureaucratic process. You know, it's the federal government after all. <laughs> so, and we'll be working with the National Park Service to develop an agreement to launch the management plan. It has to be approved by the Secretary of the Interior. And ultimately, uh, there'll be some initial funding to get that stuff going. Ultimately, probably in about three years, we'll be up to full funding and actually be able to implement the management plan. But we would be looking for ways to launch and do things and bring this honor out there to the public even as we do all that work. But it is a bit of a process, so stay tuned as we, we roll this process out. Um, one of the key parts of that management plan and what we're going to be focused on once we get through it are telling the nationally significant stories of our region that were identified in that feasibility study 10 years ago. And the Susquehanna River is front and center to that. Its role as a corridor of culture and commerce is just huge in American history, as well as in our own local history. Uh, this area was the gateway to the frontier for over a century. You know, if you, if you cross from Lancaster in New York, you were, you were heading into the wilderness for a long time. And I, I, I think the adventures of people came over to York, and the people that wanted to play it safe stayed in Lancaster. Uh, so it's kind of interesting. I think some of that carries forward even to today. Um, but, and of course, York's role is in a, at a revolutionary turning point as the first capital. It wasn't just the capital. The, the reason it was in York they wanted that Susquehanna River between them and the British in Philadelphia. You know, that, the Susquehanna played a big role in that decision that defined so much of York's history and role in American history. And of course, the Underground Railroad story of our region. This was a hugely significant region, New York and Lancaster. And the river was a, a key player in that. And in Lancaster, we had national figures, James Buchanan, Thaddeus Stevens, before, during, and after the Civil War, playing a huge role in national policy about slavery and freedom and reconstruction. So that's a story we're going to want to be focusing on. And we anticipate partnering with the York County History Center on the York side, LancasterHistory.org in Lancaster, to see how we can reach beyond the river and tell these stories uh, to York and Lancaster, but, but always you know, connected and have the river front and center. And the Amish uh, community in Lancaster, we're, we're not sure we're going to spend a lot of time on that. We think it gets enough attention. Um, but uh, it is one of the stories of national significance, both in terms of how Lancaster's playing community defines the playing community across the country, and the unique landscape that Lancaster has uh, in the Amish country. Which brings me to the why is the river front and center to this region? And, and, and why is it so key, and why are we called the Susquehanna National Heritage Area? Because even though we don't think about it every day, I, I, I kind of do because I cross the river every single day. For, I, th I counted up 16, we've been down to Zimmerman Center since 2004, so that's 15 years. Twice across, you know, across the river twice a day. I don't know what it adds up to, but it's thousands of crossings uh, I've made across the river. So I am thinking about it, but most of us take the river for granted to a certain extent, unless you're boating on it or you have a house there or you're hiking or something. But the river truly shapes our region uh, more than we even think about or know about. Um, it shapes us economically. It's economically vital. Whether you start down at the local level with small businesses like Shanksmere Outfitters, John Wright, that rely on the river as an attraction for their businesses and their economic vitality. If you look at the river from the standpoint of river of power and the power generation that powers our homes and businesses uh, and, and beyond just our region, it's economically vital. Uh, if you look at the river itself and the water and how significant that is to our homes, our, our businesses, our factories, and our lifestyle in this region, the river over half a million gallons of river, uh, over 500, 500 million, I'm sorry, 500 million gallons a day are taken out of the river to support communities. And that dark area down at the bottom, that's our region. We take out the most um, water in, to serve our communities. So it's economically vital, but it's also really significant from all the other standpoints that aren't just about the economic vitality. The river's really old. It's one of the old, two oldest rivers in North America. Ironically, the, the other old one is called the New River. <laughs> it starts in North Carolina. I actually go there a couple times a year. To my, my wife's family has a place near the New River. But those are the two oldest rivers in North America, and they are two of the six oldest in the world. So 
It's really old, 260 million or more years. It starts really small. Have any of you ever been to Cooperstown, New York, to see the baseball hall of fame? Did you go two blocks away to see where the Susquehanna River starts? How many did that? <laughs> ah, good, we got some. I took my son's Boy Scouts. We, we went to, last year we went to the Boy Scout Baseball Hall of Fame. I said, before we go to Baseball Hall of Fame, we're going to see where the Susquehanna River starts. And made him get out in the rain and stand there. <laughs> That's the river on the right. Lake Oswego is on the left. But the river starts out about 150, maybe 100 feet wide. And the water is pure, pure, clear water. The boys said, this doesn't look like the river where we live. <laughs> but yeah, well, there's a lot that goes into that river after, after that. But it starts really small, Lake Ostego. It gets really wide. Really, right here in our home area. If you go down to Wrightsville and look at that river, it's a mile and a quarter wide. I think it's the widest the river gets anywhere. Uh, maybe Haver de Grace, it might be about that wide, too. Um, it's, it's really shallow in places, and there's painters that, that caught that drama of the shallowness of this river. This was actually painted in Columbia back in the 1800s. Um, but it also gets really narrow and deep. Uh, there are deeps, they call them, in the river uh, off the York County shore and the Lancaster County shore that go below sea level. So the depth at the bottom is below sea level, even though the river is above sea level. The river floods. You know, we all know, and it floods all the time. These are the ten biggest floods. Agnes was the big one in 72. Over a million gallons, cubic feet of water per second flowing down the river. The normal flow is 37,000. So it's dangerous. This is a painting we actually have in our Zimmerman Center on display depicting that storm and the, the, the agony and the drama where people actually died in the river uh, because of that flood. The river freezes, and it can be fantastically beautiful when it freezes. Sometimes it freezes and floods. <laughs> so you get both. <laughs> we see this. This is Long Level, Lee Clark Marina. The lighthouse is not in the right place. <laughs> well, the river's not in the right place, I should say. Um, and, but even with all that you know, tragedy and, and difficulty of, of using and being along the river, it's become a really great place for recreation. It always has been, uh, but even more so in the last 20 years. Thanks to uh, all the partners working along the Susquehanna, our two convention and business bureaus, our two planning commissions, our story groups, all coming together to say, you know, the river is really important. We can make it a destination. And so it's become a big recreational spot. This is the Holtwood Whitewater Park at Holtwood Dam. It was built by Brookfield Energy as part of the relicensing of a dam. Uh, people come from all over the eastern coast to be there when they release water through that facility uh, to do play boating. They don't go down the water, they play with the water. And it brings thousands of people, thousands of people every year to play in the, in the Susquehanna. Uh, it's also a place for learning. And that's increasing. I think it started at Shanksmere Outfitters and they're on the water programs. We are now doing programs with the National Park Service called Canoe Mobile, where we get kids out on 12, 25 foot uh, kayaks, many times for the first time ever, over at Columbia and, and Long Level. Uh, so it, it's increasingly becoming a place to learn. Uh, but as a heritage area, the river history and the role it's played in history is really front and center for us. You know, there are rock carvings down below Safe Harbor in the rocks over a thousand years old of Native Americans carving pictures and, and things into the rocks and, and you can go see them and touch them today. Um, John Smith, when he was exploring the Chesapeake Bay, he came as far as the lower Susquehanna. He was so impressed by the Susquehannock Indians that came from our area, they're actually living in Lancaster and New York counties, came from our area to Maryland, that he made it the biggest illustration on his map that he did. He didn't put Chief Poetan, Pocahontas' father, up, that, he's in the little picture on the left, he put the Susquehannocks front and center. So the river's role in, in American Indian history made a huge impression on the early uh, explorers of our area. Of course, as I said, when Continental Congress came to York, they put the river between them and the British. So it was a barrier to invasion uh, that probably saved our country at a critical <coughs> turning point in the revolution. During the Civil War, the Confederates advanced to Wrightsville, and the, the community burned the bridge, the longest covered bridge in the world. They burned it to stop the Confederates. And they had to turn around and go back to a, a little town in Adams County. And probably that burning of the bridge resulted in the economic vitality of Gettysburg for hundred and some years now. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd just be like, you know, New Oxford. <laughs> so, um, but not to put down New Oxford, I love New Oxford. Sorry, don't worry if you're in the room, I, I love New Oxford. Um, so, and, and of course, you know, it's especially appropriate given the anniversary tomorrow 
the river is a story for other things too, like the, the most significant, serious commercial nuclear accident in <clears throat> American history. The anniversary, 40th anniversary is tomorrow. So the river has been at the center of history uh, throughout these times, and it's been very inspirational to artists. Uh, big nationally known landscape, uh, landscape artists have painted the river. I love the quote from Robert Louis Stevenson uh, when he was going along the river in a train in 1879. He said, when I asked the name and heard that it was called the Susquehanna, the beauty of the name seemed to be part and parcel of the beauty of the land. That was the name as no other could be for that shining river and desirable valley. I mean, that's pretty good. We thought it was so good, it's actually carved in stone at the top of High Point Scenic Vista, if you ever go down and take the hike to the top. So that, quote, that quote's there. So it's, it's been inspirational. And finally, part of that inspiration, part of the reason the river is so beautiful, I think for those of us that spend a lot of time at the river, what's really like nourishing to, to people is the river's beautiful. Uh, whether you're a winter morning at Wrightsville, seeing the sunrise, or a summer sunset at Accomac, uh, the river is inspiring. It makes you feel good to be here, to live here, to have it as part of our community. And that's really why we became a Susquehanna National Heritage, I think. All those things together mean that the Susquehanna should rise to the top and be recognized as a wonderful asset for York and Lancaster counties. And when visitors come, you can now say, welcome to the Susquehanna National Heritage Area. And you can say to yourself and your families, welcome home. So, thank you. Sure, yeah, I'd be happy to take any questions. So. Wow, okay, got it. over here. Yeah, Mark, is the Susquehanna Heritage Organization uh, partnering with, cooperating with uh, any of the environmental organizations like Chesapeake Bay Foundation that are worried about the ecology of the Susquehanna. Yeah, you know, we, we get asked that a lot because we're, you know, we're not a, primarily an environmental organization. But obviously if the river is not clean, if the environment of the river is not protected, if the, if the natural lands along the river aren't conserved and properly managed, we don't have much to share with people. We don't have much to value as a, as a community. So we regularly are doing programs with a variety of, particularly Chesapeake Bay programs. I, I've uh, served on the Chesapeake Bay, uh, Chesapeake Conservation Partnership Steering Committee for the last few years. So that engages people from Virginia, Maryland, New York, Delaware, and Pennsylvania. We have an annual meeting, we have regular meetings to talk about landscape conservation in the region. Uh, we've engaged with the, uh, the Susquehanna Greenway, which uh, covers the entire river. Uh, we work, of course, with the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, uh, which is the state agency that, that conserves land along the river. We've done uh, cooperative things with Susquehanna Riverkeeper um, and, and the Chesapeake Bay Foundation and the Chesapeake Bay Trust uh, have both done programs and, and, and paddle trips and things like that. And we actually have a Chesapeake Bay Trust intern uh, that's funded to work with us year round um, at the Zimmerman Center to help do uh, fo programs focused on environmental protection and wildlife. So we're trying to fill the, uh, address the, the environmental side through programming. So at the Zimmerman Center, and particularly at Columbia Crossing in Columbia, we have a whole series of weekly, well, I say monthly and annual programs that are to get mainly kids, we really focus on young people, uh, but we also have programs for adults to help them understand the importance of the environment of the river. So that's how we, we kind of try to connect to those networks. Thank you. Would you care to speculate on the future of the Akamak Inn? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, you know, it's a wonderful resource. Um, the, I have not personally met the new owner. Uh, Paul Nevin, who is our Zimmerman Center manager, lives at Accomack. His home was the one that was almost destroyed in the flood back in August, was on the news a lot. He knows uh, Happy Henry, uh, is how he refers, the owner refers to himself. He's actually a Lancaster County native. He's got family roots in Lancaster. He's been out west for a while. Uh, he seems to have good intentions but I don't think he has a specific plan. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he, uh, Paul attended a meeting uh, about a, a month ago with local folks in Happy Henry, and he talked about some of his plans. It could be all kinds of things happening here, yoga, restaurant, uh, lodging, educational programs. He wants to put a dock in. He wants to have boat <laughs> trips coming there. Uh, we've always thought the opportunity to connect Accomac to Marietta, where this is a uh, 
bike trail, a lot of restaurants. Could really be a cool thing. Reestablish the Anderson's Ferry. It used to be there. Um, so we'll see how it develops. But I think there's a potential there. I don't think it's going to ever be the Acomac as we all have known it for the last 30 or 40 years. I think it'll be something different. Uh, but that might be good. You know. And Thank you. You were there at the very beginning. Well, when you, <laughs> and, you had the vision. You're the first person I heard talk the Susquehanna River Gorge. But um, speaking to the programming and the environmental, could you talk about the migratory flyway and possibly how the designation, how you can raise the uh, elevation and prominence of that? Yeah, the, you know, the river is a major corridor for uh, migratory birds. Uh, Conajahila Flats, which is the series of islands on the Lancaster side, right across from the Zimmerman Center, across from Long Level, is one of the biggest, most significant migratory bird stopover points anywhere in the flyway of the East Coast. So there are birds that fly from South America to the Arctic and stop one time on the Susquehanna at Conajahila Flats. Uh, so it's really significant, it's recognized that way. Uh, we started out early, you know, if you remember, we dedicated some interpretive panels and some things like <laughs> with birds, you know, back. 15, 16 years ago. Um, a couple years ago, uh, our Chesapeake Trust intern developed a paddle trip to the Congehilla Flats from the Zimmerman Center. So if you come to the Zimmerman Center, we give you a little guide, and, it, and it'll guide you to paddle over to Congehilla Flats, and then it talks about the, the whole environment and ecology of the flats. Um, we also anticipate doing more programs at Columbia Crossing, which is just upriver from the flats, and, uh, and, and really trying to bring that in. I think what'll what'll help highlight that area more is there's a there's a bike trail connection between Columbia and Turkey Hill that is just in the initial planning stages because we have a great bike trail at Turkey Hill going south to Safe Harbor and the Northwest River Trail from Columbia going north. I think when the, the trail gets developed between those two, that's going to expose so many more people to the environment to the Congeal Flats on the Lancaster side, and maybe can provide really good opportunities for interpretation. So, but it, it's really significant. I mean, and, and we have a pair of bald eagles that just hang out in front of the Zimmerman Center. So, if you ever want to come down, I think the largest concentration of bald eagles on the East Coast is the Susquehanna. So, curious. Uh, Harrisburg, we consider themselves a Susquehanna River community. Yeah. Were they ever part of the discussion for the heritage area? Um, they, you know, this, the heritage area started as a Pennsylvania heritage area and it was York and Lancaster counties initiating to talk about it. I'm not sure if there was any ever outreach early on to go north. Uh, I think the two counties decided we wanted to come together. Uh, when we changed our name and focused to the Susquehanna, we decided we're just going to claim the river. <laughs> so, uh, you know, a key to being a, a state or national heritage area is you've got to have local governments that support it. Funding, you have to have skin in the game. So you've got to have to provide funding to match other funding. Um, there are some efforts further up the river uh, with the Susquehanna Greenway that kind of do what a heritage area does. Uh, but right now, we're just keeping it right here in New York and Lancaster counties. Am I out of time? One more? Who are the eight senators that voted against the bill? <laughs> Funny you should ask. Um, six of them were from west of the Mississippi. They're western senators. They tend to be from areas where there are large federal land holdings. Uh, they don't, they're not very friendly to more federal designations of any kind of sort like that. And so I think, you'd have to ask them, I think that's why they voted against it. Rand Paul was number seven. Kentucky, Rand Paul's Rand Paul. <laughs> uh, the eighth was Senator Pat Toomey of Pennsylvania. Hmm. And uh, I, I'd say you have to ask Senator Toomey. We, we, out, we had outreach to Senator Toomey for years to, to ask him to support this national destination. Never got a no, we, got a, we won't be against it, but never got support. And I was amazed when I, we sat in that gallery and saw our senator. And it wasn't just us. Uh, Rivers of Steel National Energy of Pittsburgh had something in that bill, and there were a couple other things, and he voted against it. It was very disappointing. I was very pleased to see Senator Casey put his hand up and say yes. And Lloyd Smucker, uh, as, a, as a freshman congressman, right away, once we, we briefed him on the value of this, he, he joined on, and he now, of course, has Southern New York County in his district. But we're so, so pleased, Senator Casey and Senator or Congressman Smucker, to come together in a bipartisan spirit and make this happen. So uh, I think uh, Senator Toomey's email is on his website. <laughs> 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 <laughs>